Welcome into our studio, everyone. I'm excited this morning to show you the progress that I've made on this upper left portion of the painting. And if you've been following this one, you've noticed that this part was the last to be painted. So first I began to envision what would happen over here and the composition worked around to this upper left, which is still being resolved. And today I want to show you how you can develop the face of a figure in a way that will be somewhat organic to the shapes and colors that are existing on the surfaces. All right, everyone, the first thing I want you to notice is that the paint dripped overnight. I guess the warmth from the heating of the room maybe caused it to drip down, so I'm going to fix that first. And um, notice that I have a palette of old um, oil paints, and a lot of you very painterly painters will be probably fairly disgusted that I would use this paint up, but that's okay because I want to show you that it isn't just that you have to throw it away because since we're doing this sort of like a veil painting, we can come back to the color after it's dried and this water soluble oil paint works that way. So there you go, I got a clean yellow and I'm just going to fill spaces where I want to decrease that drip. And by the way, as I'm using yellow, I can be aware that yellow is creating highlight. And just let the yellow find its way down through whatever would be highlighted. And up here too, increasing this light, which is coming from here. So you might be noticing that the painting is created out of little tiny spaces. And even those drips, they are tiny spaces, which I can fix somewhat. Here we see that this kind of purplish has actually dripped down into the face. But you know, I'm not gonna mind that that happened too much. In fact, I'm going to get a little bit of that purplish color and soften it with a bit of water. And then I'm gonna use that shadow there kind of round the forehead a bit. And I can bring it, a, this tiny little section of purple behind the ear and sculpt that area somewhat. Here we see that the purple may exist also on the forehead. Now let's look here into this line, which it's actually kind of um, a little bit too close to the eye. And so I can broaden that section by taking a little bit of yellow next to it and basically pull the bridge to the right side of the face. Now, after yellow, a very tiny line of purple. As I said, it has to go to the right side. And it's kind of dark. So I may need to work a little bit of darkness in other places. These are those tiny lines. I 
again, I'm going to need some darkness in here because we know that the inside of the ear is dark too. I don't want to pull too much attention out here because it's after all not the most important thing, but a little bit of shading will get that quality of ear. Now, as I step back and I look at it, I'm quite pleased. This darkness here can go up and over just a little bit. And I don't want this to get too defined. So when I'm finished, I may come back just slightly lighten the lines by lifting them off a little bit. A little highlight right in this section. And so we just have a little white here with yellow and slight bit of that other color too from before and then right in here we will just highlight the nose which would be highlighted up the bridge too and of course i can't resist going somewhat into the face because I know that they they would also have a little bit of highlight on the face. And let's bring some to the lips. Just a touch of light. Now, assessing what I've done, I have some constructive criticisms for myself, and I'm going to tell you what they are. One is, I feel the ear is a little bit, tiny bit close over here. And that's easy for me to fix because I can just saw off the bottom of the ear. So simple. But there are other things that are bothering me. It's actually gotten a little bit ahead of some of the other parts of the painting. And this is what can happen with oil paint a lot easier or more readily than if it were watercolor. So what I have here is a softening brush. And what I'm doing is using a tiny bit of water to almost imprint a little bit or sponge off a little bit of color where I want to, like here. Why I'm doing this is because I want the features just to recede a little bit back into the fabric of what I have done before. So I wash the brush and then I dry it off. This is an acrylic brush, so it doesn't have as much wicking ability as say, a natural bristle brush would. But as you see, if I lighten it with just a slight touch, almost sponging, I can pull back the quality of the paint. Okay, so the final thing that I want to do in today's session for you is to bring in some dark, some really rich dark. And I'm just gonna take some of this dark phthalo blue and mix it into my red from before. I can get a real rich violet. And then I'm gonna bring that into some sections here on the outside. And 
um, I have to stand back a little bit to do this so I can see where I want my dark. But I'm going to be quite brave with this. And now I'm going to work it in with a little bit of moisture from the brush. And I can even get a touch of white with it. And I surround and sharpen anything that I want, such as this section here in front. And let's keep going, working in dark to light. And right here around the arm, Work very light. But here, I want it to be really concise, very dark on the outside edge here, and then lightly connect here, ever so delicate. Okay, so I think you can feel how adding some dynamic of dark really sets off the light. And that's exactly how I'm going to simplify my painting now as I bring it towards its completion. I will accentuate the darkest areas and also highlight the brightnesses. And I may do that even by doing large swaths of color.